like uh, Fundação Macau and uh, of course Fundação Rui Cunha and uh, our friend uh, Filipe Guadalupe who um, help us uh, with, uh, with everything uh, every time we come here. Um, so this is our, our last event of the year. Um, this is actually the second year of this um, uh, cycle of lectures that uh, we've been um, uh, promoting. Uh, focusing on, on artists that um, um, one way or the other um, influenced um, the art scene of Macau um, due to their uh, architectural or um, craftsmanship uh, or construction prowesses. Um, so we, we, we showcase those, ar those artists and um, uh, bring some light to, to their body of work that um, definitely deserve to be uh, shown. Um, tonight, um, we, we focus on, on uh, may I say, an uh, uh, almost accidental uh, Macanese, an Italian Macanese uh, who, who was a, uh, an adventurer and uh, a very complete artist, um, even though he, he, wouldn't, he didn't like to, to be known as such, he, he, I think. He would like to be known as a, as a craftsman, mm -hmm. more as a craftsman than, than an artist. So it was we could we, we could call him as um, a sculptor, uh, an architect, uh, uh, um, a contractor. So uh, so he was a, a, a focal figure of um, of construction in Macau, uh, mainly in the in the fifties and in the sixties. Um, and uh, to talk about um, Jose Wakwanchi, uh, we have with us tonight um, Dr. Jane Lai. Uh, she's a PhD graduate from MUST uh, in uh, Fine Arts. Uh, she conducted a groundbreaking research project on, uh, on the overlooked history of Macau from the 50s and the 80s, uh, centering in Jose Wakwanchi and his era. Her work focuses into a crucial uh, issues such as Macau urban change, uh, hi its history and uh, uh, marginalized communities, uh, engaging in various roles from curator and artist to running an uh, uh, independent bookstore. Uh, Lei was also a founding member of the Stone Commune and the art space of uh, uh, Old Ladies House, later known as the Ox Warehouse, and is uh, presently uh, a freelance artist and a recently established uh, Lighthouse Publishing um, Company, uh, focusing on the publication and the, the distribution of humanities and arts books. Uh, so, Lei, the floor is yours. Thank you. So, uh, thank you for coming um, to this seminar organized by uh, Dokumomo, and thank you, Dokumomo, for inviting me, and thank you, the foundation also. I am Jane Nay, um, so I'm sorry my English is not so good. So uh, if there is anything that uh, is not clear or wrong, uh, please feel free to correct me later. Thank you. So today I would like to introduce to you a uh, part of the history of Macau, uh, of art in Macau. And I will focus on an Italian artist um, who has lived in Macau for nearly 50 years, uh, Mr. Oseo Aconci. And this is my doctoral research uh, project, but it, it, it wasn't an easy process, and there are still a lot of imperfection in it. So I welcome any correction and that you may wish to make. Thank you. So his family um, is based in Tuscany, uh, in Italy, in the valley of the Arno, uh, a small village called uh, Cuciliana, uh, in the province of Pisa. So, uh, Arlando Aconci, Aconci's son, uh, describes it in the book, uh, 500 Years of Italians in Hong Kong and Macau, um, about his family. And this book, you can find it in the library now. So, and Tuscany is Consider it is to be the most beautiful region in Italy, and the capital of the of uh, this region is uh, Florence. And while Cucinella is famous for its marble uh, carvings, 
The nearby town of Carrara is Italy's most famous uh, marble producer, famous for its pure white uh, marble. Since the Renaissance, it has been a popular raw um, material for artists. Um, for example, Michelangelo's um, David um, was carved from the white marble produced by here. As a result, there are many people in Kuchiniana who are engaged in marble trade business. Um, uh, Kunchi's father, Dante, was a skillful craftsman, and his family was a sculptor. On 70 October 1905, uh, uh, Oseo Akonji was born, um, the second of four siblings. At a young age, Akonji studied uh, at the Academy of Art in Carrara. So now you still can find the front page of the, this academy, so they are very good at sculpture. Um, after graduating, he took over the family's uh, business, working with his father and teaching at the academy also. But it was not easy for him to work with his father. His father was chic and demanding, and he was always dissatisfied with Gakonchi's work, so he felt constrained in his work and he longed to get away from home and make his own way in the world. At that moment, a British company was looking for a marble quality inspector in Italy. It was like a job just for him. So he knew marble so well, and he was very eager to leave. Then he succeeded in getting the job. At that time, the British company gave him two choices. One was to go to London. The other was to go to the Far East, Shanghai. So Akonchi chose Shanghai without hesitation. Before traveling to Shanghai, he has to come to Hong Kong. So he arrived in Hong Kong in 1935. He was helped by the Italian Sister of Charity of Canosa in Hong Kong. He stayed with a, a Portuguese family there. So actually, apart from the British, um, the Portuguese were the most numinous at that time. Even the Saget uh, Hart College on King Road, the first school established by the Sister of uh, Canosa in Hong Kong, was also funded by the Portuguese. Now, as documented in these photos that you can see, this is the first Portuguese family to arrive in Hong Kong, the Barreto family. So Akonji probably made friends with some Italian police, nuns, and Portuguese of Macau at that time. Also, at this point, it is important to briefly introduce the Italian church organization in this period and their importance in the history of Macau as a whole. It is the connection between the Italian church and Macau that has led to the relationships between um, Akonji and Macau, and most of his work is related to the church, including architecture and sculpture. Since the 16th century, due to the special geographic location of Macau at that time, European missionaries have been coming to Macau before going to China. So apart from those from Portugal, there were many Italian missionaries also. The church's first priority is to carry out charitable work such as education and medical care in these areas. So at that time, the Italian churches in Macau were mainly the Sisters of Charity of Canosa and the Salesian of Bosco. The ones we see in this photo are the six um, uh, Canosian Sisters um, of Charity who first went to Hong Kong on 12 April 1860, and several of them came to Macau later. They established schools, creches, and hospitals in Macau to take care of orphans, especially girls, and provided them with education. Another Italian church that came to Macau was the Salesian of St. Paul's. In 1906, six missionaries of the Salesian arrived in Macau also and established the Immaculate Conception Craft School, the Salesian Secondary School. And it was the first technical school in Macau to accept orphans for boarding. It was also the first Salesian school in the Far East. Um, as you can see in this photo, the 100 years old school building was demolished in July 2019 for the purpose of expansion. These two Italian originated institutions remain a certain role in Macau community until now. 
So there were also some um, several uh, Salvation missionaries in Italy who contributed a lot um, to Macau were, and were highly respected by the people and who were also close friends of Oseo Akonchi. So during the war, there was a shortage of food in Macau and the price of rice was very high. At that time, Brother Akista Pais, I hope that is the name, Maria um, was the dean of Yutwa Secondary School and Salation Secondary School. He went out on his bicycle to visit benefactors and asked for food for the students and for teachers. Another, um, Father Michael Supo, uh, who was the register of Yutwa Secondary School at that time. And then there was Father Gedeno Nicosia, uh, who did a lot to help students and refugees during the war. So, um, for example, Michael, um, Michael Supo, Father Michael Supo, has contributed a lot um, to publishing and established uh, the Salation Printing House in Macau in 1943. Uh, he was published a large number of teenage novels translated from foreign languages into Chinese. Later, he went to Shanghai to teach at a school and continued to publish and translate books for young people, Chinese young people. But in 1955, uh, 53, um, he was arrested and imprisoned on the false accusation of being a secret agent. So he was interrogated for 15 months and his health was also damaged as a result. After his release, he went to Taipei and later he came back to Hong Kong to take part, uh, who take the post of principal in uh, Dangenbo Secondary School in Kowloon. And then he died in Hong Kong in 1972. And in 1977, a bronze bust of Brother Supo was made by a country to com commemorate his contribution. And the bus is still standing at the entrance of Yutwa Secondary School. <laughs> so, so let's get back to uh, Kong Chi. After a six month stay in Hong Kong, he departed for Shanghai. So what did he do in Shanghai? So let's read how Anando wrote about his father in the book. Also in that book of uh, 500 years of Italians in Hong Kong and Macau. So and at that time, uh, he has mentioned the Sajun building, once known as the Cafe Hotel, is the north wing of the present-day Peace Hotel in Shanghai. It was not only the most well-known landmark in Shanghai in the past, it is also famous for its Art Deco style in the history of architecture. So the, uh, the decorative works at Sajun building in which our country was involved um, must have been carried out between 1935 to 36. Although we don't know which part he was responsible for, but it is worth noting that the art deco was in full swing in the 20s and 30s at that time. And it is evident that this was indeed his favorite art style. Uh, if Shanghai was the starting point of our country's artistic career, Korea, he was probably in this metropolis. Um, he returned, uh, he started his sorry, uh, where Chinese and Western, uh, Western cultures met and crashed most fiercely at that time, that he embarked on an even broader leap to forward in art. So due to the China, China's war against Japan, um, a country left Shanghai and returned to Hong Kong at the end of 1936. After returning to Hong Kong from Shanghai, a country and his friends revisited Macau. He once told his son um, that when the ship approached Macau, the beauty of what he saw was unbelievable. And how he loves the Portuguese food and wine in Macau, and this reminds him of his native Italy, but apart from that, uh, there are many other things that fascinate him about Macau. He found so many unexpected old churches, 
um, squares and Portuguese buildings in this small city, as well as old and modern sculptures. So Akonji's identification with Macau is entirely a cultural one. That is the proof, because when he saw the churches and sculpture in Macau, he was amazed and excited, and he couldn't help picking up his pen and writing three articles about them. These are the only three that uh, can be found now. Uh, all three articles are, were published in Macau during the war, and all were published in the capacity of an escooter. So we could see now here, um, this one, the first one that he uh, wrote uh, in uh, 1936, uh, that was about the church, St. Lawrence. He, that was his most favorite church. Um, and then the second one is about two modern sculptures that was uh, now uh, disappeared in Macau. So you can find it in Nispo, Nispo. And that was in 1943. And also the um, uh, architecture uh, that you, uh, the, sorry, the sculpture that you still can find now in Neas Nado. So um, these are the three articles that uh, we could find only now. So maybe there are more. And in 1939, Akonchi moved his family to Macau. So those articles must be written after when he arrived in Macau. So as the world situation was getting more and more serious due to the war in Europe by the British allies, the Italians in Hong Kong were in a very embarrassing and dangerous situation. So he decided to leave his business in Hong Kong for a while and moved his family to Macau. So although Macau was saved from the direct attack from the war, but it did not have an easy time during the war. So Macau was surrounded and controlled by the Japanese army as if it were an isolated island. The price of rice and other foodstuff was beyond the affordability of the general public. Uh, so coupled with the extreme shortage of food supplies, Macau was plunged into famine for weeks. My, father, uh, my father's family could only eat bananas. So in the book, Anandu refers to his, family, uh, to his father's family's situation during the war. So now the photo we could see is the refugees uh, at the Church of San Francisco Xavier at that time. So when the refugees brought to Macau, Akonchi uh, also worked with the Italian church to help them. And at that time, the governor of Macau, Mr. Barbosa, was a great lover of culture and arts and appreciated the talent and kindness of Akonchi. Knowing that he had a large family and was living in a different situ difficult situation, so he let him work in the World's Bureau, CSSBU, I think, where he came into contact with a large number of Macau's construction projects those putting his past experience to good use. A few years later, when his finance became uh, more stable, he met with the governor of Macau at that time to thank him and resigned it from the public service to set up his own company, a country construction company. So a country's works are divided into three main aspects, um, sculpture, architecture and mural paintings. And today, uh, we will only talk about um, architecture briefly. So when we talk about the architectural works of Akonchi, the most important ones are the buildings that he built for churches. There are not many uh, modern churches uh, in Macau built after the war. Among them, three were built by Akonchi, San Francisco Xavier Church, uh, who was built in 1951, and Chapel of Our Lady of Sorrows, uh, built at uh, 1967, and Our Lady of Fatima, built at uh, 1968. So, and each of them has a different uh, architectural style. Firstly, let's talk about San Francisco Xavier Church in Monja, uh, which was built in 1951. In 1907, Sister Lowe, Sister Law of the six uh, sisters of Charity of Canosa established uh, St. Francisco Xavier School in the Tongs Garden. 
uh, now demolished already. So in Mongha, so this garden is built by a businessman Tong Lai Chun. And the uh, students were mainly orphans and chi Chinese girls. The stone monument with the inscription, with the inscription, as scholar uh, San Francisco Xavier, uh, still can be seen now on the exterior wall of the church. In the center is the album, is the emblem of the Canosa uh, here. So um, a cloud above, a cross, and a heart in the middle. According to the Chinese newspaper Juno Q, uh, on 12 March 1951, the foundation stone uh, of a new church, San Francisco Xavier, will be laid at 3 p.m. on the 13th. The project was carried out by a country, uh, the designer of which cannot be traced. It was likely that the church had obtained its uh, design or pattern from Italy and asked a country to follow it because in the 50s, churches had to be built in strict accordance with the European uh, churches in Woods. The, the architect did not have much freedom, but that would be changed, and I will talk about it later. The interior of this church is rather plain compared to the other manufactured churches in Macau, uh, but it is a building that fits in with the social situation of the 50s. On the other hand, construction materials were still in short supply at that time. There are reports of stealing of, build, uh, of building materials uh, from construction sites in newspapers always. It is also in keeping with the Canossian Sisters' mission of poverty and charity. So the foundation stone, written in, 19, in 1951, is located on the exterior wall of the church, and the bar leaf uh, bas relief uh, on the exterior wall are also made by a country. However, it is believed that uh, a country would have made some adjustment according to the actual situation at that time, such as the material uh, used it in the construction, and there is still a lot of care and attention in details. Um, the spatial structure of the church is decided to create empathic feelings in the minds and bodies of the public. So our country has exposed many of the pillars uh, and beams that support the church skeleton, creating a progressive structure. The entire interior is supported and encased. It is like forming a protective shield. The church is well lit, and with soft lights coming in through the windows creating a safe, quiet space. It meets the requirements of the church as a place of spiritual purification and salvation, as well as a space for orphans and for the disabled. The design of the church windows, um, they are made of iron with the initials SFX. But the windows were more modest uh, when the church was first built, as in this photo that we could see. And the present windows may have been modified during the renovation work in the 70s. So speaking of round windows, there was another building that used uh, round windows at the same time. It was a row of four silky surface curtains located at Kuya de D, uh, Caneno, behind St. Paul's. Maybe you still remember them. So as can be seen from the photograph, the most striking feature of the building's appearance is uh, its facade. Um, so who was have the round windows, and composed with round windows and long streak um, rows of windows and article style are element favorite by him. The four blocks of Sylvie Servants' curtains may have been the first government project taken up by Akonchi as an engineer according to records that I could find so far. The buildings were demolished in March um, 2012. So window design um, is an important artistic element in a country's architecture, especially in churches, uh, which his insistence uh, on craftsmanship can be seen clearly. So this one is the one in Chapel of St. 
Francisco Xavier, and this one is the one that uh, I'm going to talk about, is the Chapel of Our Ladies of Seven Sorrows in Kao'o. It's the stained uh, windows in the facade. So another church, um, this, uh, the Chapel of Our Ladies of Seven Sorrows in Kao'o, was completed around uh, March 1967. So this church can be regarded as an architectural masterpiece that fully embodies the artistic style and humanistic spirit of Oseo Akonchi in all aspects. And at the same time, it also embodies his dedication to religions, uh, which is expressed by his architectural form that incorpor incorporates the meaning of the Bible into the building. So in terms of architectural form, um, what do you think this church resembles? So I'm sure many of you have felt this way uh, before. It looks like a big white tent, which is strictly matched with the image of the tabernacle in the Old Testament, Book of Exodus. Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt and traveled 40 years through the wilderness to reach the promised land of Canaan. And God asked Moses to build a tabernacle for the worship of God in the wilderness. The tabernacle has a special symbolic um, meaning in the Old Testament and so also in this church. So even the ropes that the Bible described very clearly as being used to hold the tank is very much similar to the design of the chains that runs from the roof to the ground. And Oseo Akonchi used the biblical image of the tabernacle to refer to the Kao Leposarium. The reference was clear and was very much in line with the situation of the lepers at that time. He created an abstract spiritual uh, symbol with very strong visual power. And this is also a church built in difficult times. Uh, when Father Nicosia invited Akonchi to build a new church uh, for the Nepos, uh, for the Neposarium, he did not have enough funds, but Akonchi agreed to do so. And at that time, Father Nicosia was uh, determined to serve the poorest and the most miserable people in Macau, and Akonchi supported and participated in his own way, and they were very good friends. And at that time, the area around the Kao'o uh, Leposarium was uh, really a desolate place where no one wanted to go. People had to rely on ships to transport all the supplies from Macau. So you can imagine how difficult it was. And according to the Juno Waku, uh, also there is a picture of uh, Father Nicosia on his 100th birthday. So according to the uh, Juno Vacu of uh, 21st December 1965 uh, reported um, the fundraising of the construction of the church and uh, also the Portuguese um, weekly raised 10,000 to have to build the church at that time. So it was at that time that the construction of the church began. Um, but in December of that year, um, 1966, a serious social incident called the Motim 123 took place in Macau. And at that time, many foreigners left Macau. However, it seems that the church continued to be built despite the turmoil. Because um, after three months, After three months uh, of, the, of this um, uh, Motim 123, um, in March 1967, uh, the church was completed. So in the June of Waku, um, there was a report that the governor of Macau, uh, together with the heads of state, uh, went to visit the newly built church in Kao'o. And they were very impressed by it. Ah, sorry. This church is a building of um, special significance. It is unique in terms of its architectural design and sim uh, symbolism and the 
humanity behind it and the context of the time. The emphasis on simplicity and functionality has always been a characteristic of our country's architecture, as well as that of modernism. So another church was built just one year later. It's Our Lady of Fatima, which was completed in December 1968. And different from the simplicity and modesty of those two churches, Church of Our Ladies of Fatima is a strict new modern church. But it was not built in a busy part of the city, uh, nor did it aim to become a tourist attraction. Instead, it was constructed in a new immigrant and grasswood community, which used it to be filled with cheap houses, factories, and tin shops with few public facilities, and rare children were only allowed it to play in the streets. Now suddenly, a church was built with a new design full of aesthetic and modernity, which brought a new atmosphere to the community and became a symbol of the area. And the space of the church was enlarged and so that more people could be accommodated. And the cost of the building was um, about 800000 so which was a lot of money at that time. But don't forget, uh, Macau had just experienced the Team 123 in 1966, and many foreign, foreign organizations left the city. But the church not only stayed on, but even went far further as to build new churches in two of the city's most marginalized and neglected districts showing that the church would not give up on anyone and that it was determined to be the, with the poor and the needy. And it hoped that the new churches um, would attract more people from the community. So St. Francisco uh, Xavier Church mainly serves orphans, women, and the handicapped. And uh, Kao'o Church um, serves lepers. And Fatima Church serves a large number of new immigrants uh, from mainland China. Even now, also, many new immigrants uh, went to this church now. Most of them are unfamiliar with uh, Western culture so, and therefore need an iconic building that can make a lasting impression and make the public feel proud of the church. A Portuguese architect mentioned that uh, the designer of the time, uh, of that time, was a Portuguese architect who had just returned it to Macau after graduating. But at the end of 1966, uh, during the Motim 123, he left Macau for the United States soon afterwards and did not take part in the construction process. So he had serious doubts uh, about the design, designer's participation in the expansion of the church and wondered what the original design was. How much of the present buildings is the original design and how much of it is the idea of Mr. Akonchi? Actually, none of this would be known now. But what is certain is that the church was built by Akonji. And according to interior design and decorative details, we can tell it's his style. With many of the architectural elements and artistic features that he often used it. The church is a modern minimalist building and with a rectangle bell tower on the right side. The lower part of the bell tower is made of white and black ventilation bricks, creating a strong visual style. And the church office um, on the left side is also in black and white. And the front facade is in a typical modernist uh, architecture, minimalist, with a curved root and sharp lines, the use of black and white tones throughout the church, which is an unconventional use of color in church architecture in Macau, making it a refreshing change of base, and it can be considered as one of the avant-garde churches in Macau. The most striking feature of the whole church is the design of the stained, stained glasses. Um, which can be seen that this is a very important part of a conscious design. The article style has been fully developed here, especially in the use of colors and geometrical shapes which make this uh, church stand out from the rest. For example, a set of high-arched colored uh, windows with 
bright greens, yellow, blue, and golden crosses. When the sunshine comes in at noon, the whole space is filled with light golden yellow rays. And this combination of colors give people vitality and hope. Under the reforming spirit of Fantigon II, a conscious design no longer focuses on religious symbols, but rather on a more minimalist and abstract form. And using geometrical patterns and colors um, to create images that would be transformed into multiple combinations, presenting a subtle and varied sense of aesthetic. And these stained glass by Akonchi recalled the remarkable window works of Frank Lloyd Wright, um, an American architect uh, of the same era. He was a well-known uh, modernist architect and artist whose glass work was known as Paris-style uh, stained glass. Although there is no way to know whether Oseo also loved the works of Frank Lloyd Wright or whether he was influenced by him, actually Frank Lloyd Wright started his career as an architect 40 years before Oseo. But it is not surprising that both of them were influenced by these artistic trends um, and favored the sim similar aesthetic styles since they were both at the beginning of the 20th century when Art Deco, Art Nouveau, and Modernism were in full bloom. And it only reinforces one point. Akonchi's works put the world's most cutting-edge architectural style into practice without any reservation, so that the Church of Our Lady of Fatima, Fatima became a work of art that was close to the world's architectural aesthetic in that era. His intention is evident. Architecturally, these two churches built in the 60s uh, built in the 60s are quite innovative. Um, they could be considered as two modern, um, two modern churches in Macau that best uh, reflect the spirit of the Fantigon II innovation at that time. It was Bishop uh, D. Paulo José Tavares uh, who led and played a very important role in the construction of these two modern uh, churches. Um, according to the records of the Catholic Diocese of Macau, he became Bishop of Macau between 1961 and 19, uh, 1973. So shortly after arriving in Macau, he traveled to the Vatican in 1962 and participated in the Second uh, Vatican Council. So he attended all the working sections from 62 to 65. He was therefore familiar with and enthusiastic um, about the most important resolution of the Catholic Church at that time. As one of the office and evidence of the reforms introduced by Fantigon II is, church inscriptions were no longer required to be written in Latin but in the local language. Language. So the stone monument is uh, inscribed in Chinese only in the Church of Our Lady of Fatima. And the one of Our Lady, Our Lady of the Seven Sorrow is written in Latin and Chinese. But the stone tablet in San Francisco Sacred Church, which was completed in 1951, uh, the tablets were still written in Latin only. So this shows the difference between them. And also, a major part of the reforms introduced by Fantigon II was the renovation of church architecture. In the past, the church strictly required the churches in foreign countries to be built in the European style and even um, assigned it um, uh, architectural forms. But in the 1962 Vatican Second Conference, uh, it was considered that such a distinct, a distinct architectural image originating from European churches uh, would lead to the rejection by believers of different culture backgrounds. Therefore, it was no longer required to be built in the style of European churches. The church also makes several recommendations on church um, architecture. One of the main points was that it should be integrated with local culture venues. This innovative setup has brought more aesthetic freedom to Akonji, 
So that's why these two churches were built in his favorite modernist architecture style. So next to San Francisco Safi Church is the San Francisco Safi Church Center. It used it to be the Asinu, the Sander in Foncia, uh, which has been converted into kindergarten now. So according to a report in the journal Vacu on 27 July 1950, uh, Asinu, the Center in Foncia, is a well-equipped uh, free-story children's uh, conversation home in Tong's Garden. Uh, the building was constructed by Oseo Akonchi and was opened on 5th August 1950 by then um, the governor of Macau, um, Abenu Hodish, the Oliveira. So the marble plaques um, so it is the same year, it is almost the same year of the Church of um, uh, St. Francisco Xavier. So um, the marble plaques of the, with the name of the monastery in Chinese and Portuguese that obviously made by Oseo Konchi are still hanging on both sides of the main entrance. Built at the same time as the uh, church at San Francisco Xavier, the design of this nursery is a blend of many styles, but it is possible that the design was also given by the Italian church. However, there are some details that are obviously uh, his work. Um, for example, this uh, reliefs in the shape of babies is the style of Tuscan, Tuscany and also a road of long window with fine grease and um, also the same type of window is also found in his other buildings. On the other side of the church is San Francisco home for the aged according to the Juno Vacuum on 26 March 1965. At that time there were more than 100 mentality and physically challenged elderly people in the home and due to the lack of space, uh, it was to be extended into a four-story building. The plans for the extension were decided by a Portuguese engineer and constructed by Oseo Akonchi. The most distinctive feature of the building is that the exterior walls uh, were made of large pieces of ventilation bricks. And his architecture is very conscious of the combination of functionality and aesthetic. And he understands that the building must be adapted to the local environment and climate. And he realized that in a hot and humid city such as Macau, the building must be well ventilated. And therefore, he likes to use this kind of building materials. So uh, that is one vacuum, K-I-O. So that's what written in that uh, Chinese newspaper. So go to the next page. Uh, so the building, um, some tropical modernism works with local characteristics which began to be discussed in the restaurant architecture community. Uh, modernist architecture of the 40s and 50s showed uh, similar materials considerations. And Mr. Akonchi, who lived in the same era, uh, his thinking is uh, very similar. But rare, uh, rarely is the use of uh, ventilation bricks so extreme here uh, where the functional of the material is integrated into the aesthetic of the building. At the same time, it wraps around the entire building, uh, making it impossible for anyone to look in from the street. This allows for privacy and protection for those who live inside, um, because most of them are the disabled and the, and the people. And at the same time, a certain amount of light can be uh, still we main, maintained it, and the building is not completely isolated from the outside. The geometric uh, pattern of the ventilation bricks is uh, unique, 
This building can be considered as an architectural work of tropical modernism built with ventilation bricks and to show people how these two engineers adapted to the local environment of Macau. So ventilation bricks seem to have become a specialty of a country and could be found in almost all the buildings that he was involved in. And ventilated plates were actually very popular in the 50s. They are able to keep the air circulating, and this was a very suitable and inexpensive um, building materials at a time when air conditioning was very rare. In, and there is an issue of Dr. Momo uh, published uh, some years before, paid special tribute to the craftsmanship of the ventilation bricks and the artisan skill of Oseo Akonji. These architectural details all contains his concern and understanding for the socially disadvantaged, highlighting his humanistic concern and the ethical value of architecture. Architecture actually is the ultimate physical manifestation of culture, inevitably reflecting the people's aspiration for life, social values, and local aesthetic of each era. The words of Oseo Akonji could be used to illustrate this. And there are many other buildings of um, Oseo Akonji that are interested to introduce. Uh, to talk about. Uh, today I would like to take a little bit time to briefly introduce some of them. Um, along the beach, uh, along the beach of Jokwan, there is a small tiny cottage built on the side of a hill. Uh, I'm almost hidden from view. It doesn't occupy any space of um, the road uh, and even hides a little bit inside. Uh, this small house is the stone cottage where Akonji and his family have spent countless weekends together. And beside the gate, there was a mosaic um, inscription. Sorry, <laughs> inscription um, Villa Oseo. So it is confirmed that this is the cottage where Akonji's family used it to. Um, uh, used it to be there on weekends, filled it with family's um, memories. But now it has changed already. Today, this cottage has that was once built by this artist and architect has been turned into a maze room next to a luxury mansion. So this is probably the truest reflection of our time, and also even changed the name. So at present, there are still several stone villas in Chokwan, which are very similar to the architectural style of Akonchi. One of the most important judgments is based on the use of stone as um, construction materials. As most of these houses are private properties, uh, no information can be found at this time, and therefore cannot be confirmed. It. Uh, some of the houses have been empty for a long, long time and forgotten in the forest. However, the buildings themselves were very solid, although abandoned. There are other buildings that are confirmed to have been built by Akonchi, um, but they have been demolished. For example, Kamle uh, Monastery of Huya de Banya built in uh, 1951. So you can you, you have noticed that in 1951, Akonji have made many buildings almost at the same year. Demolished and now becomes an open car park for many years already. And the Katonit Center, uh, built in 1960, was demolished and is currently um, being rebuilt, I think. And this one also. Uh, the post office intermediate civil servants residence in Cabeza do Rocket, built in 1963 and demolished in 2021. So the salvation home for the blind now known as the Rehabilitation Center for the Blind, was built in 1961 and 
still exist. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> no one noticed it, maybe. <laughs> so um, according to the information I have found so far, he has taken part in many public uh, works projects, uh, including some important government projects, um, such as the opening of the Escola Commercial Battle, uh, Nona School in 1966, who was now Escola Portuguese uh, of Macau, so picture on the white side, and also the St. Joseph College. And the fountain uh, project of the Nair Snado uh, in 1972 and 73, as well as uh, police quarters, civil servants quarters, and government buildings. He was also involved in the construction of numinous church uh, buildings, as I have introduced uh, just here, uh, including churches, uh, convents, churches, common houses, schools, libraries, etc. All these buildings um, formed it part of the urban landscape of our city. A common feature can be seen in some of these buildings that still exist today is the, strip, the spirit of craftsmanship and creativity that characterized the early years of um, Macau's post-war urban development uh, is presented in his works. Uh, in the 50s, Macau was still in the era of handicrafts and the stage of industrial development had not yet arrived, yet, which formed the beginning of the development of Macau City in an era that once had a demand for craftsmanship and creativity. The building materials and detailing he used uh, were in line with his aesthetic style and were able to meet the high functional specification for a house that responded to the climate and social economic environment of the time. His work is deeply connected to Macau. In the nearly 50 years that he lived here, he has lived with the city through difficult times of war and famine and waves of refugees. He became one of the people who participated in the post-war renaissance of the city in the 50s and the words he left behind can be considered as a witness to the rise of Macau. Building part of the landscape and the image of Macau in the 50s and 70s, and it was remembered by many people. Akonchi's works are not only innovative uh, in the sense of modernism, but also have a vivid local cultural vocabulary which is rare in the history of Macau's art scene in terms of its richness and diversity. He does not con concentrate on only one medium only, but is an artist who can move around in different art forms. He was a craftsman who valued the traditional craftsmanship of the artisan, but also a formal innovator who was fascinated by modern art. He is a practitioner and a thinker. Perhaps it is because of his um, craftsman consciousness, consciousness that he values uh, the overall quality of a building. And even with the simplest of the materials, he still wants to create a sense of aesthetics. Um, the diversity and the hybrid of the styles that he has formed it, um, are the accents of his art and the reason why he loves Macau. His works also enrich the cultural, artistic, and architectural history of Macau, and in particular fill in the gaps or in the current understanding of this period. And Oseo Akonchi is an artist of contemporary significance whose works have made a unique and important contribution to the times. And as we know, there is always a competition between memory and forgetfulness in the writing of art history, especially for those artworks that have lost their historical and cultural connections. The direct effect of forgetting is the taking away of meaning. Behind it is a breakdown of the local cultural network, and it would be very easy for the kinds of artworks to become a sacrifice in the struggle of our social power. So through today's seminar, I hope we can make some amends together in this regard. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you. 
uh, well, such a, an amazing character and such a complete <laughs> artist, uh, wasn't yeah. it? Uh, my, I think my, um, my, my, my favorite uh, art piece is definitely the Caho Church. Everything about it is so unexpected, not only the, 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 the outer shell, but also mm. the sitting, setting out. It's, mm. it's, you are not expecting to be it uh, turned that way. And we, all, we always have to keep in mind that it was always built in um, such a tight budget and yeah. during the 50s and the 60s, yes, was yes. after the war. Yeah, and, yeah, yes. In a very uh, difficult period. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And so uh, there was always uh, constraints. Yeah. Um, so um, how, much, how much of its uh, path through Hong Kong and Shanghai do you think he brought back to Macau and he applied to the... Uh... I think nobody knows. <laughs> 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 but uh, that is very interesting that I read um, uh, w uh, what uh, Arnaldo written in the book 500 Years of Italian... Uh, I think that is the only information that I could get about uh, what um, Ose Lan Kongji had, had, uh, had done in Shanghai because no one knows what he did there. And the project that he participated it was such a, a big project at that time in Shanghai, a very uh, important landmark. So, um, of course, we don't know which part he take, in, he, take, he take part in, but that I mentioned that is important is uh, he was there. And, and behind, uh, after that, uh, he was also using many similar form maybe that inspired him from that project, we never know. Uh, but because that is the first first place uh, when he left Italy, so he, that was the first uh, city that he was uh, work in. So I think that was very important for him. But of course, we don't know and we couldn't tell. So I just can So that is why <laughs> The, um, I was so difficult in doing this research because I, I cannot, uh, I, I don't know what he thinks, so I don't know what exactly uh, he, 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 he did. And also nobody talked about that, so, and, and no article written about that. So I just can, ex, um, I just can post every, uh, every materials that I have, I have found and to make the comparison and to make the lines uh, with it and to also search the uh, society, the uh, economy, and the, what happens at that time in the society to support the, the right. things. Yeah, yeah. And try yes. to build this. Yes, to build, to build the yeah. scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, I just <laughs> mentioned that maybe there are many imperfections in, the, yeah. in, in it because uh, it is still in research uh, for me and I hope more people can do the research also later. Yes, <laughs> definitely. And, and found and more things. Yeah. Yes, and we thank mm. you for uh, reuniting all this material <laughs> that we know is so hard to, to get. Yeah. So uh, we can open to the audience. If someone has a comment or a question. Mm. Okay. Uh, you mean the church? Uh, the next one. You mean? Ah. Uh, okay. This one? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you can find it actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, really? So, so you must know very well about the building at that time. Wow. You mean now, at yeah, that time? Yeah, there are some cracks. They they have replaced the the roof, the roof, and the, there are some cracks appearing. There are some fences. Uh, 
have been uh, placed in, on, on the building because of, I don't know, some, some problems. But mm. uh, <clears throat> now I just want to tell one, one story. Uh, when I arrived in Macau in 78, I still met Ozeo. Oh. Because I worked in the, in the, I came to work to Public Works mm. in the Rua Formosa. Uh, the Public Works office was in the Rua Formosa. And uh, in front of the door of the building, where now is, where was still the, the Centro de Suzano that he built, he had a cafe there, uh, the Tuscana, Tuscana Cafe, restaurant. Oh. And um, he used to stay there, sit there at the window looking at the girls that come out and, <laughs> <laughs> and he was he was a very pleasant person and um, he used to say that uh, the reason why he stayed in macau living in macau was he came from hong kong uh, with a friend one day the first time he came to macau from hong kong and he stayed at the riviera hotel where now is the bank of china in uh, san malo corner and he stay there <coughs> for a weekend and the first time we sit in the in the cafe in the restaurant the waiter came and uh, asked him they asked for some food and uh, the waiter said the waiter bring some bread and some red wine and we <coughs> when he <laughs> look at it he says I don't I don't want to leave Macau. I will <laughs> stay here <laughs> forever. <laughs> uh, and also we had some 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 conversations on in, in the beach in uh, Colwan, the small house that you showed mm -hmm. uh, where you usually used to go on weekends and stare at, at the veranda. He was already aged man, but a very funny one, uh, with lots of stories and, and so on. And uh, always have a drink there, some red wine, some <laughs> olives, and some bread for the friends. So we had a lot of conversations there. But one thing also funny is that behind the, that house, there's a the hill going up with rocks and trees and so on. And uh, along the, the his stakes, I think it it, be, it was built in the fifties also, or sixties or so. He was conquering the hill, so he built some uh, places to stay. Mm. And he put a chair there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's yeah, one yeah. place. The top one has three chairs, metal chairs. They have mm. been there for years yeah. and years, mm. and they used to go there and, uh, and we talk there, mm. stay there, look at the sea and so. But I think it was one of the first buildings in Colwan, oh. and they yes. had to. Uh, he used to say that we had to bring all the materials by boat from yeah. Macau. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the rented boats and so on to build it, and then the, the workmen came also two or three to build it for several months, several or more than one year. But it was a very, very, very interesting person with my stories, probably more stories than we have ever hear, heard. Mm. Uh, maybe the family, no, I don't know. But to, it was a very, very interesting, interesting guy. And the, the, the architecture that the, you have shown here is, at the time it, it was, I think, in the 50s, was a bit out of the norms. I mean, uh, for instance, the church in, in um, in Kaho, I I I didn't notice before, but I noticed now in the picture. The 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 interesting interesting point is, the church is a tent mm. shape, mm. and there's an axis. Mm. Okay, when you enter the church, you have an axis, but the altar is not in the in the the same axis, is oh, yeah. on the side. Yeah, yeah. Which is very interesting. It's, yeah, 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 it's, it's completely, mm -hmm. you know, 
but the break, brainstorming, and uh, I'm not going to do this. I will change something here. And uh, also the, the other church with the, the vitrals, the, the glass, color glass, is also very interesting because the, um, the tall windows, glass windows, yes. uh, the way they open, the tall uh, window, Yeah. This one? Mm. You see how they open? Mm. Yeah. They swing they in the axis. Yes. Which is not normal. It, this is very, very intelligent and yes, very, yes. very different yes. from from, from uh, any other picture uh, windows on mm. all of the time. Um, well, that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jane, I, I wanted to, to thank you for uh, this very methodic study of, of the life and work of uh, Ozo Laconci, um, because you have, you have really uh, taken a, a serious uh, um, regard on his work and uh, did a, a very, very deep uh, research I had uh, heard your lecture uh, around a year ago, and uh, there are a lot of new things that uh, come across. And I personally wanted uh, to to say that it's I really appreciate your conclusion when you consider that him his role or his contribution was as a craftsman uh, mostly, and then there is his personal uh, idea of or his personal remark that he was not an artist. Um, I think that uh, uh, it's that's very interesting that the idea that he was a craftsman because this this notion in the in the in our understanding of Aconchi is very controversial and it's something that people mm. say he was an artist no he was not an mm. architect so I think to to go into that issue is really important mm. and uh, in a way being a, a, an artist is something that you do every day of your life and you grow and you die uh, uh, going after uh, that uh, work. So he was an occasional artist, he was an occasional painter and an occasional sculptor. But what I find interesting is that through the first works of the, the Church of Saint Xavier and uh, the building next week, uh, next week of the, for the Canossian uh, sisters, uh, we can see that he was learning uh, he was learning the craft, he was learning the technique, and his contribution was already there, but in a very um, light way. Uh, and the evolution that he did, and especially uh, in the two churches mm. that you showed, mm. which I think um, are uh, very um, profound in, and complete uh, works of architecture, uh, for me it's really a uh, a learn in the process through the construction, through the experience of building and the detailing. And the article that I wrote about uh, the, this church, uh, Fatima, was actually out of uh, an interview with Vittorio. And uh, um, after the interview, uh, that there was that mechanist architect, and uh, after the, the interview, I went to the archives. And the, the project that was submitted by uh, the y other young architect yeah, yeah, who yeah, emigrated yeah. Uh, was a very simple submission. So it didn't have all of this. And so what, uh, according to Vittorio, what uh, Ozel did was really take over the project in the spirit of what that young architect had left. So I think that is a very a meaningful way of learning, how, being generous with the other people's work and then opportunistically becoming an architect because he wanted to be a builder. So I think that is a really, <laughs> yeah. uh, after your lecture, I really have this kind of idea of why he became an, act, uh, an architect. Mm. Yeah. 
Yes, that's true. Actually, in my research, I always, uh, at the beginning, I always um, are confused about which path should I write. Uh, it, for him, is it artist, architect, how to define? But uh, later, actually, uh, I read, um, uh, actually, in Art History of uh, Renaissance, the craftsman, the position of craftsman is much higher than artist. And the, art, the word artist actually is invented very late in the history. So craftsmen actually is the highest people in that time. And also I noticed that Nando has mentioned his father. In the very beginning, I have written that. He said that my father was a kind of uh, Renaissance uh, man. And Renaissance man in Latin actually means the man who have multiple capacity. Just like Michelangelo, he was a sculptor, a painter, and also architect. So that was very uh, usual in that time of uh, Oseo Akonji. So that's why he, he know very well about the uh, art history. I, I'm sure he knows all this very well. And then he was, how, how to, how, he also, for example, when he wrote those three articles, the first three articles he wrote in Macau, I think that's very important for him because it shows his, uh, his uh, how, how, uh, how deep is his uh, uh, art um, uh, sense and, and knowledge in these two free, uh, these three articles. Actually, I all translated in, uh, 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 in my thesis. So, and he wrote very, very deep uh, about all these um, uh, sculptures. Uh, for example, the sculpture of Nias Nado. I never seen one article that wrote about this. Uh, this sculpture was so deep, so so many information inside, uh, so many knowledge inside. So I think he, that's important for him, and he used his name as as Guter. So this is the one that he wants to define himself. So as an craftsman, as an as an as Guter. But that doesn't mean that he don't know how to build a house. <laughs> it doesn't mean that he is not, he, he can also be an architect for him, and also in that uh, difficult time. So just like that, we never find who is the designer of that, of, of, of the church, of that house, because they never mentioned in the newspaper and in the, in the paper that we cannot find. Yeah, so maybe it's because of this reason that he just take up the responsibility and <laughs> and do everything. Yeah, and learn. Yeah. And learn. yeah. yeah. Uh, I would like to ask you if yeah. you could kindly show us the images of the, um, Our Lady of the Sorrows. Okay. Not to take a picture, but to talk about it. Yeah, he is good. Okay. Or, or even, yeah, this is good. This is uh, many, many years ago, <laughs> I came to the place, and I was definitely impressed by the, 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 the construction without knowing who took part in it or when was it uh, even built. So by the time that I uh, found out that it was built by an Italian who was from Tuscany, mm. everything became rather self-explanatory. Mm. So uh, <laughs> any work, uh, works talk, and talk with the information the way it was informed. So what the person that generated that work put there, uh, that has to do with the training, with the origin, uh, with the time, uh, with the, uh, probably the, the, the traveling he has made, all this informs a work that has been made. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, in uh, this kind of structure um, has to do with the, uh, Italian structures that were developed in the 50s by uh, an engineer, Pierluigi Nervi, who built structures that were not to support architecture, but they were structures that were the architecture. As far as I know, uh, Pierluigi Nervi were mostly during the 50s, and he made one seminal work that was the, um, the um, sports pavilion for the... Um, Olympiads in Rome, 1960, that was a shell. Mm. That was the structure comes to the ground and that the ground level is voided to make fenestration and entrances. So this is very much a shell that uh, it's very probably Oseo knew about uh, 
these buildings that were made, uh, let's say, one less one decade earlier. The other thing has to do with the fact that Oseo was from Tuscany. Mm. And one very strong tradition of uh, religious buildings in Tuscany, that uh, is a tradition since the Gothic in the, that was founded in Tuscany, is our independent buildings that of the religious compound. So the church is one building, the bell tower is, is another building, the Campanile, and uh, the Battistere, where people are baptized, is another building. And this is a, tr a tradition that only exists in Tuscany, or was originated in tr Tuscany. You have that in Florence, you have that in Pisa. And uh, it's very, very self uh, obvious that this, um, this tower, is uh, the Campanile, is, has a very autonomous presence in the, um, in the composition. So this fact that uh, there is a contemporary Italian architecture that was being made in the in the recent years by Pier Luigi Nervi that was uh, shown to the world during the Olympiads, and the fact that the, this tower is very autonomous, has a very uh, uh, independent presence in the structure. These are elements that very much uh, are transported by the person who did that. And uh, that's why it, coming to know that uh, uh, the artist or the, 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 the architect was an Italian and it was from Tuscany, it kind of uh, talks by itself that there is a presence of things that are known, which means that uh, culturally is well informed and intellectually is well informed. So it's not a a work that uh, is um, just casual, not at all. Can I add something to this? Uh, you just remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how to talk to you in <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, I wonder. Uh, good evening, everybody. I, I am um, Jose Alconci's son, one of his sons. And uh, well, thank you so much, uh, Jane. Uh, we, we had multiple conversations and and I could only do so much because uh, my father passed away when I was 15 and he was ill uh, two years prior to that. And so I was 13. And, and as a, the person that he was, was, I don't think he was too interested in telling too much of uh, philosophical mm -hmm. ideas and, and, and whatnot to, to, a, to a kid or to kids. And so I, I have some memory of him talking to people. So yeah, it's not always... Uh, you know, I'm not, it's not that accurate. It's just based on my memory, and so I think you based a lot of your research also on my, what my, the memories of Arnaldo, mm -hmm. which is uh, my half brother, and he would probably know more. One thing I suddenly remembered about this was why did he put the altar there? Because that, the altar is is the breaking of the bread. Well, throughout the whole thing, the, the priest will be preaching. He preaches in the pulpit, but when is when is when he uses the altars for the breaking of the bread, and so I I. If I recall correctly, he wanted to pl to create the 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 Last Supper, so Jesus would be sitting just like the the picture, the famous one of Leonardo da Vinci. Mm -hmm. He would be in the center, and the mm -hmm. apostles, which were represented by the doors, mm -hmm. would be surrounding Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, so I th uh, if I recall correctly, that actually he's representing the Last Supper there. Mm -hmm. So he's combining. The, the, the visual idea of them sitting around the table with him in the Last Supper, where in the Mass, it's the where you do the breaking of the bread. Yeah. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, <laughs> it just came to me as I was looking. Yeah. Someone else? I think we can uh, close the session. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Thank you for, Thank for you. being here. Thank you. And uh, see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.